saint margaret of scotland chapter one bertha the princess margaret she spends her childhood and hungry at the court of saint stephen eight hundred years ago the court of saint edward the confessor was the residence of a young princess named margaret of whom few beyond that court knew anything her life up to that time had been a checkered one if indeed we can properly call a life checkered which had been almost entirely passed in the dark shadow of misfortune long before she was born her grandfather edmund ironside had been murdered in his share of the kingdom of england seized by canute the dane her father and her uncle the sons of the murdered king were sent by the usurper to a powerful friend of his in sweden together with secret instructions that the unhappy boy should be put safely out of the way canute's friend seems to have had more conscience than canute himself and instead of putting the poor children to death he privately sent them away to the court of st stephen king of hungary probably the same stephen as we find honored as a saint with a festival in september every year indeed before we have done with the life of this young princess margaret we shall properly discover a strong family likeness between her mode of life and what passed every day at the court of st stephen margaret's father and uncle then still mere boys and thus rudely driven about the world were kindly received by the king of hungary edwin the elder of the two and the uncle of our young princess did not live to be a man but his brother edward became so popular at the hungarian court as to marry the queen's niece agatha a daughter of bruno brother of the emperor st henry their union was blessed with three children edgar afterwards surnamed the ethelin christina who lived to become abbess of wilton and margaret the future queen of scotland from what is known of later events in her life from what is known of later events in her life the date of her birth must have been somewhere between november seventeenth ten forty six and november sixteenth ten forty seven by the time that she had become eminent enough to make people anxious to know its exact date no one survived to give the information but before margaret was born several changes had happened at the court of england canute at his death had been succeeded at first by one of his sons and then by another and when the second died in ten forty two the english drove the danes out of the kingdom and looked about once more for a king of their own if they had known anything of the young grandson of edmund ironside or if hungary had not been so far from england margaret's father might now have recovered his rights she might have been born in more prosperous circumstances and the whole course of her future life might have been very different from what it actually became to understand what took place at this crisis in the affairs of england we must remember that the father of edmund ironside was twice married when edmund's mother died ethelred his father married emma the flower and the pearl of normandy and the aunt of william afterwards conqueror her eldest son edward became a favorite with the english from his retreat in normandy he had for many years watched the stormy course of events in his own country and now that the danes were gone and the english in want of a king of their own he stepped in and secured the crown without difficulty according to the laws of feudal secession there could be no doubt that it belonged to margaret's father edward the son of edmund ironside's eldest son yet even our interest in all belonging to this young princess will hardly dispose us to regret an arrangement that gave st edward the confessor to the throne of england although that arrangement excluded the family of the younger edward from its inheritance all those events happened before margaret was born st edward did not invite his nephew from hungary as might have been expected to reside in england so it was that margaret was born and that she spent all her childhood at the court of st stephen a royal princess in exile even although she may have had kind friends about her is a notable instance of human weakness possessing only the name of rank without its independence and its other substantial attributes excluded by the accident of her birth from those avenues to wealth and influence and station which are open to the inferior ranks of her countrywomen a poor and homeless princess might advantageously change places with the humblest lady in her kingdom 
at the same time it must be remembered that even in a worldly point of view high position and commanding influence are not generally good for the mind there are few persons whom they do not more or less spoil few characters which are not sensibly deteriorated by them the direct tendency of an influential position is to foster habits of imperiousness and selfishness many a gentle mind has been irremediably vulgarized by high elevation not that misfortune is without its peculiar and kindred dangers but on the whole it is a better school for the character than the precincts of a reigning sovereign's court our young princess was fortunate in her opportunities of mixing in a court where earthly rank was made more attractive by the practice of the loveliest virtues the king himself taught his courtiers by his example the duties of generosity towards the poor and of tender sympathy with the sick he was remarkable for the practice of prayer and is said to have gained some of his temporal success over his enemies on his knees more especially he prayed that he might be permitted to see hungary completely christianized before his death his exertions with a view to that end were such as to earn for him the title of the apostle of hungary and the permission of the holy see for himself and his successors to have a cross carried before them in processions out of his tender devotion to the mother of jesus he dedicated his kingdom to her he took leave of this world on the day of her assumption which he had taught his people to call great lady day such a man could not fail to create an influence around him of which even children like margaret must have been sensible long after she had bidden adieu to hungary and the home of her youth and when she had entered on her own arduous apostolate she could not fail to remember the engaging lessons which as a child she had learnt from her father's royal friend and benefactor